Hello and welcome to today's video. This is episode 97 of the Confessions of a Yarn Addict podcast. And in today's episode, I'm going to share what I've been knitting. Um, my videos are coming up. I've just filmed a needle review for a new needle I've been trying trialing out over Christmas. And I also picked up a couple of American magazines a couple of days ago. And I'm going to give you my opinion on whether I think they're worth it considering the price that they are here in the UK now. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. So a couple of special offers because I'm worried I'll forget them at the end. You can get 15% off my successful lace knitting course. I'll put the code on the screen um, until the 12th of January. It's an online course. You can start straight away. You can work through it in your own time and at your own pace. It's a huge course. It's the biggest one of my online courses. It has something like 60 lessons, I think, something like that. It's bump, absolutely a bumper course. So you can get... 15% off at the moment. You can also get 15% off my online shop, which is yarnaddict.co.uk. And the code for that is the same as for the online course. And that is valid until the 20th of January. So I'll put all the details below. So just click more below your video, I think, or there might be an arrow down. I'm not sure. Um, but you'll find it below this video. But you may have to click on show more or more or something like that to see the full comment. Um, if you have any questions, just ask below this video. If you are new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person. And I sell yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. So first, I think this might be a slightly shorter podcast episode today because I've been knitting a lot, but I've been working on a deadline design. So that's taken up quite a lot of my knitting time. And I've also been working on two design submissions. One was for two issues, which I sent off yesterday. And the other one is for three issues, which is due tomorrow. And I haven't finished knitting all the swatches for that yet. So that's my main job this afternoon and evening. So even though I've been doing a lot of knitting, I haven't necessarily been doing a lot of knitting that I can share. But I have done some knitting that I can share. So I'll share that first. And then I also picked up a couple of American magazines that I haven't read for a while. So I thought I'd give you my opinion on those. Um, especially in terms of what they cost here now. Because I was slightly taken aback when I got to the till. Because I didn't look at the price when I picked them up. So anyway, let's look at what I've been knitting first. So first let's go to my um, default project when I'm not doing deadline knitting or swatch knitting. Which is my... Uh, sweater so I'm wearing this pink sweater knitted in the Daima alpaca silk that I uh, knitted this autumn and I wear a lot it's very very cold here at the moment it's just around zero so I think this morning when I got up according to my watch it was like minus one and when I walked uh, the dog early it was one degree and it was snowing slightly there wasn't a lot of snow it wasn't settling there was only just tiny little flurries in the air looks like it's stopped now I can't see any out the window it's very very cold and it's overcast and my hands are getting cold so I think I'm actually going to put on my uh, twist brioche hand warmers that still living on my desk after my trip to Norway uh, because my hands are quite cold so I'm going to put these on these are only available from my online successful brioche knitting course or my in-person brioche improvers workshops I'm in the park at the moment with the dog. I've been up there for a while actually, but we've got, I can't walk very far at the moment because I have plantar fasciitis in my foot and it was really hurting today so I've done a slightly shorter walk but just sat down for a break because when I, my foot hurts I limp, I start, my hip starts hurting. But I'm a bit warm because I was wearing a hat and I really wrapped up because it is minus one today and it was actually snowing a minute ago and there's a few flurries so I don't know how visible it would be um, but they keep coming and going but I'm wearing my Travella cow I've got my dog lead 
wearing my Travella cow, which is really warm. I was wearing my hat, but I got too hot, as you can see. So let me show you a bit of our park. So the park is not big, but they put a path in through it. I think last year, the year before, a few years ago maybe, they did a lot of work up here during the last few years. They've done put off some new goals there. This is the only very reasonably flat bit of the park. There's a play area down the bottom which have improved. They put up benches all the way around the park. They planted some areas which aren't doing brilliantly well. And then they put this park this path in. Um, a lot of kids walk through here to the local primary school which is in that direction and the local secondary school which is in the other direction. Um, so it's quite a busy area. Lots of people walk their dogs here. I think the reason the only reason I'm the only one here this morning is because it is very very cold. But it's very popular, especially in the summer, lots of kids play here. It's surrounded on all sides by housing estates, most of them social housing, um, or at least on like three sides with social housing. Um, so it does get used a lot this park. So I'm knitting another version of this sweater. I was, let's see, where are we? Where's my marker? So last week I was a little bit before this, a few rows before that marker, there we go. Um, I was probably about down here. Um, I put that marker in because on Saturday night we watched a film. We didn't go out to the cinema. We watched a film at home. We watched Belfast by Kenneth Branagh, I think it is. Um, it's an amazing film, really, really enjoyed it. Film was an hour and a half long and I knitted on this sweater the whole time. And I knitted 4,050 stitches. So I knitted 30 and a half rounds and I have 300 stitches per round. So 4,050 stitches. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you will know that for the last year, I think, I've been keeping track of what I knit when I go to the cinema. Or if you watch any films at home, they'll be watching one sitting. Because sometimes we will watch films and we'll watch like half a film one day and half film the next day. If we do that, then I don't track it. But if we watch a whole film in one sitting, I track how much I knit. And this is the most I've knitted if you take into account the length of the film. The most I knitted was another film, Napoleon, I think, um, which I knitted over 6,000 stitches. But that film was twice as long as this film. So um, I did quite a lot of knitting. I've got that far below the underarm. So I'm making good progress, but I've still got quite a lot left to do. I'm only on the second ball of yarn, I think. Um, it's 25 gram balls. So I think I'm only on the second one. But this is uh, living next to my chair. And if I need a break from deadline knitting, uh, which is brioche, or from the knit swatches I've been knitting, I've been picking this up and doing a little bit. Um, I would like to really get on with it. I wish it was finished already. I would love to finish it by the end of January because on days like today when it's chilly, it does, even though it's thin, it is quite warm. And I'm really enjoying wearing this. And I wear this not quite every day. But if, if I'm wearing a black top, I don't tend to wear it because it doesn't shed as much as mohair, but it does shed a little bit. But if I'm wearing a top that's not black, I tend to wear this because it's just so lovely and warm and comfortable. And I love it. And I can't wait to finish the one that's on the needles. And when I finish that, I may knit another one. I'm actually going to Norway in March for 10 days. So I'll actually only have eight days in Norway because there's a day traveling there and a day traveling back. So I'll have eight days in Norway. I am considering getting yarn to knit a dark gray, like a charcoal one of those sweaters. But I'm also thinking as it'll be March, it'll be getting warmer. Maybe I'll Wait till next autumn. There's a chance I'll be going to Norway again, kind of August, September. So that might be a better time to buy that yarn and do something else because I really like the sweater. It's just so comfortable. I like the shape. The pattern will be written up eventually. When is anyone's guess? I've also been thinking I wanted to knit a cow. So I have a colorwork cow. Let me just grab it. Um, this is the second version I knitted. So the first version was um, plum and pale pink. Uh, I was wearing it when I was walking the dog yesterday. 
I also knit in this one, which is knitted in Yattigan Merino Cotton, which I keep as a sample when I do show some things. But I fancy knitting another one similar to this, but a different stitch pattern. And I'm using the um, Nipro Symphony hand dyed yarn. Um, I'm using the Luna, which is the um, Merino Silk, because I want to do a review on this yarn. And I've knitted with the um, Viva, I think it's called, the Pure Merino blend. And I like it, but I don't love it. So I thought I would try the Luna, which is Marina Silk DK, to see what I think of that before I do the review. Um, so I cast on yesterday. I really shouldn't do because I should be finishing the swatches I need for my design submissions. And I also have this deadline project I need to finish by Thursday at the latest. Um, I really could do with finishing it tomorrow so I can post it on Thursday but I need to finish it by Thursday at the latest so I can post it on Saturday because I'm teaching all day Friday so I really want to really should be knitting on that but I was also thinking I don't have a lot of knitting content content for this podcast so yesterday I persuaded myself to wind the yarn and cast on first I cast on in a one by one I was going to do a one by one corrugated rib and then I didn't and I did a one by one um so like knit one in knit one in each color but in stocking stitch and then I thought no it probably will curl so I ripped that out and then I thought maybe I will do a um like a fold up pico hem but then I also thought I'm not 100% sure that these colors are going to go together um, or I'm going to like them together so I ripped that out again <laughs> I took my break earlier so I'm using these colours they're both I don't have the labels here they're both called something pink I think that one's called pearly pink I would say it's a bit more like beige um, light brown taupe maybe light taupe I don't know love this colour I'm not 100% sure but I like this colour but I'm not 100% sure whether it's too dark what I want so I decided before I knit 30 rounds of stocking stitch to do this pico folded hem that I should probably knit a swatch and actually make sure that I like the stitch pattern I've typed up and that I these to actually go together and give me enough contrast because if not I might order a replacement for this one so I ripped it out again and I cast on enough to do four repeats of the stitch pattern and I've just knitted a couple of rounds so um, I may not actually do any more on this today because I need to finish knitting these swatches but if I need if I get fed up with knitting swatches this afternoon and evening I might just knit a few rounds of that just to see how the colors work together when I start doing the stitch pattern um, because there's no point doing all the rib or a folded pico hem or whatever if I decide I don't like it um, because I've just wasted a lot of time knitting that and then I'm to rip it out anyway it I put it in my uh, color clutch um, which I really really like uh, you can get the pattern for the color clutch and the glamour clutch so you probably have seen the glamour clutch but let me just grab another one so glamour clutch with beads and color clutch the glamour clutch is a little bit bigger um, my purple glamour clutch is in use for my deadline project so I grabbed this to use for the um, new cow. I have another project as well that I need to cast on next week. Um, I decided not to do it this week because of this deadline project. But I need to come up with a small project for a workshop that I'm teaching in March. So I'm going to cast on for that next week. Um, so yeah, I might make it to match that cow, I think, because then I could do it as a set, but I haven't quite decided yet. I popped into the newsagent yesterday because I thought there was a new magazine out with one of my patterns in it. I thought I had a pattern in the current issue of Simply Knitting magazine, 
but I think it must have been bumped to another issue because I bought it and normally they send me the magazine but last time I had a pattern of simple knitting they didn't send it to me so I was going into town anyway so I thought I'll just pick it up because it's not that expensive um and obviously it's a business expense so I picked it up but I don't have a pattern in that issue so I've actually put the issue and all the stuff that came with it aside and I will include it when I do a giveaway planning to do a giveaway I was going to wait till I go to get to 3,000 subscribers so we're just under 500 subscribers away from that but I might do a giveaway earlier I'm collecting a few bits and pieces for a giveaway and um, I will let you know when that happens so I put that in there but while I was in the news agent I also picked up a couple of other magazines so I picked up interweave knits and interweave knits gifts and just before Christmas, I picked up designer knitting, which is what Vogue knitting is called in Europe. Now, I have designed for both these magazines. I've designed for Vogue knitting and for interweave knits. Uh, interweave knits, from, I th actually thought, I was surprised when I saw interweave knits because I thought they had disappeared. I know at one point they were sold and I actually thought they'd gone out of business, but they must have been resurrected, I guess. Uh, Vogue Knitting, which is called Designer Knitting in the UK, used to do, I think they used to do four main issues a year, plus a couple of one or two special issues a year. And I have been in a few of their uh, magazines. I have had a design on the cover of one of their magazines. I think that might have been like their Christmas special, gifts special issue. Uh, I had a shawl, grey beaded shawl on the cover. I have also been published in interweave knits, not as much as Vogue knitting. Problem was when I was submitting to them, you had to actually send, send your physical submission. So you had to knit the swatches, write up your description, print it all out, put it all together and post it. And at the time they were based in Colorado and it was very expensive to ship it there. And obviously you had to worry about time. So I used to ship it more expensive cost so that it would get there in time. And it just became a bit impossible to do. I assume now, by now, they would accept digital submissions. I know Vogue Knitting do. Um, I haven't submitted to Vogue Knitting for a while. Um, the publisher that publishes Vogue Knitting also do quite a few other magazines and books. And they do a lot of um, magazines for different young companies in the US, like the Noro magazines and things like that. They used to do the Debbie Bliss magazine, which I've been in a few times, including a cover. Um, and I designed a lot for them over the years, mainly for their other publications, but a few in two or three maybe in Vogue Knitting and then some of their other publications, including books. But it's becoming very difficult to ship stuff abroad now. It's so expensive. And the last thing I did for them was actually at the start of COVID. And the deadline was around the time that we and New York went into lockdown. And I think... I realised what was about to happen, so I, it was nearly finished, so I finished it quickly and shipped it by FedEx, and I think it arrived in New York the day New York went into lockdown, or the day after, and they basically couldn't deliver it, and then I spent a couple of weeks trying to work out, get in touch with somebody, so I could arrange for it to be re-delivered to their home address, and it was quite stressful, <laughs> and I must admit, I don't think I've submitted anything after that. Because that was quite a stressful thing. And I thought, is this really worth it? Um, but I might start submitting to them again. I'll see. So anyway, these magazines are expensive. So Designer Knitting cost in the UK $9.99 in my local newsagent. We have a very good local newsagent that stocks a lot of uh, magazines, both British and foreign. Now, I used to buy every single issue of both Vogue Knitting and interweave nets because at the time when I started buying those magazines there weren't a lot of choice in the UK there was knitting magazine I think and let's knit and then uh, and maybe yeah and simply knitting and then when the knitter came on the scene I think I stopped buying as many American magazines as I had um so just because I read this before Christmas it does have quite a few patterns obviously People buy knitting magazines for different reasons. I mainly buy them to see what the patterns look like. And I quite often enjoy reading some of the articles. I don't ever knit the patterns in them because I design my own. But I do like reading the um, articles. I like things like uh, 
reviews on products and things like that and news pages so they do a, they've done a big advertising feature here on the liquor needles um and then they have these like news pages and stuff and i really enjoyed that kind of thing because um well it's just more interesting to me than the patterns but that's because obviously i'm a designer so it's a little bit different um than a normal hobby knitter if you like um it's got a feature on tom daly who is british he is actually from a local town plymouth um not that far from where i live um there is a thing about knitting in norway which is quite interesting um and there's a thing interview with stephen west and there's a feature on mittens and um, book reviews um this it has quite a lot of patterns in it i don't know how many i didn't count them up hang on can we does it list how many patterns are in it no it doesn't but it has quite a few patterns in it so i think if you enjoyed the features that the issue has and you enjoyed the patterns i'm not sure the cover would make me want to buy this because the cover looks like crochet but it's actually knitted because uh, when i picked it up i was like what's crochet doing on the cover of a knitting magazine i think it's perfectly okay to have crochet knitting magazines by the way but i'm not sure what i put on the cover but that is not crochet it's knitting but it's designed to look like um granny square really but it's knitted and i would say that looking at the patterns in here considering the fact that in the U us this is rogue knitting which we think of as being very fashion forward i would say in this particular issue to me the patterns look a little bit dated um but they had quite a good selection of patterns but to me they look a little bit dated but i enjoyed some of the features in this magazine so i picked that up before christmas i'd actually planned to take it to norway with me but then i didn't then i picked these two up and this is the regular interweave knits um which was also 9.99 it doesn't feel it's not as thick as the design and knitting one it's quite a bit thinner it's a smaller page and it doesn't have the glossy cover um it feels a bit cheaper to be quite honest but it's the same price and i haven't looked at it in detail yet because i only got it yesterday but it has a good selection of patterns it has all the patterns at the back um i wanted to see what they did because i thought if i want to submit to them again i need to know what kind of stuff they're doing so it's got a thing about choosing speed breed try that again it's got an article about choosing breed specific yarns for your projects and talking specifically about sheep i guess um it's got a thing on uh, spinning these are really pretty hat and gloves uh, mittens rather with like a twisted stitch pattern got a really pretty shawl got more hats and a cow oops that cow's quite nice actually um got a little cardigan which is also very nice and a vest top and a sweater so in terms oh and another sweater which is so all the patterns are very pretty um And then it's got a few uh, one page of like news in the front but it's not uh, like new products and stuff i would say in terms of comparing it comparing these two now i don't know whether this is like a special this is the winter 2022-23 issue and this is winter 2024 i was wondering whether this was a special christmas issue um but it's not but this has a lot more patterns and more articles and feels better quality than this does but in the uk they're the same price i don't know what the price is in the us because it doesn't say so stuck a sticker with the uk price over the label so i don't know what the price is in the us but if i was going to choose between the two these two and i hadn't seen the inside i would go for this one i think maybe the patterns in this one are better they just feel a bit more modern and stuff that i would want in it but what made me do a double take when i got to the till yesterday and i saw how much my magazines were costing me was this magazine this is the interview in this gifts issue and it's 14.99 
it's 1499 which is ridiculous for a magazine it is a lot thicker than the other interweave knits and it has a glossy cover and it has a lot more patterns in it so let's just have a quick flick through it a lot of the patterns are smaller things um because obviously it's a gift knitting issue but it has some quite interesting patterns in it a table runner little coasters they're quite pretty actually um wine gift bags it's got a blanket it's got some mittens it's got cushions so it's got some really interesting things in it um most of them are kind of small things it's got a tree skirt for your christmas tree it's got some baubles um they're called balloon ornaments got some more cushions a cow a hat very colorful hat um hat, cow and hat set uh slippers then it's got some articles some other fingerless mitts they're really nice actually colorful uh, i like those and another cow and socks and another hat and then it's got some like news pages and things in the front um so it's got quite a few projects and they're all quite small um a lot of them on the cover so at least if you pick this up you could look at the cover and think i don't like any of those i won't buy it or i like those i'll buy it I think in terms of the price, I don't think this is worth it um, for my personal taste and the patterns that I would knit if I wasn't a designer. I don't think this is worth it. When I realized the cost of it, I nearly said, I'll leave that one. But I felt a bit embarrassed and I thought, well, it is a business expense. So I thought I will get it and then I'll just do a review on, on the podcast about it. So I will sit down and read this more inter more thoroughly. Um, it feels better quality than the other interview knits because it's got a glossy cover page size is the same and it's probably about at least twice the thickness if not three times the th thickness so probably in terms of price per pattern this is better quality than that i think the best quality though is this on the best value for knitting is for money is this because it has more patterns more articles and it's the same price as the main interview knits so i don't know how easy it is if you live in the UK or other places in Europe to get these magazines where you live. We're very lucky on a local big news agent in town stock a lot of craft magazines. Um, they always have done, which is very good. There used to be a craft shop across the road from them. I remember when the current shop, shop opened with the original owners. I think they've changed owners since. I did say once that, oh, I'm really impressed with all the knitting magazines you stock, including the American ones. And they said, well, as there's a big craft shop across the road, we assume crafting is popular here and we that's why we've decided to stock them. So I don't know how many of them they sell, but they still stock them. I don't go in there as often anymore because I don't buy as many knitting magazines as I used to do. The ones I'm publishing, I normally get sent to me in the post and I read those and I don't tend to buy a lot of extra magazines just because I don't have time to read them. I spend the time, I guess, in the past I would have spent reading magazines and um, scrolling on social media. So between knitting and scrolling on social media, there isn't a lot of time for anything else. So I don't read as many magazines as I used to. Because I used to go in there every month and look for any new magazines that I hadn't read yet. Um, but I did pick these up. I'm going to have a look through them and then I will properly add them to my bag of giveaways that I'm going to do later this spring okay so let me know if you've read any of those magazines if you live in the states my impression used to be when I used to design for interview knits and vogue knitting was that they were kind of the creme de la creme of magazines in the states and then you had like your regular monthly ones which I guess would be the equivalent to what we have in the UK but let me know if that's still the case are they still the top magazines or do you have other ones that you think are better let me know uh, they're the only american magazines i think that we can get here at the moment or at least that i've seen um if you live in the uk or europe let me know if you've read any of those magazines you do like me used to read them and you haven't read them recently would you pay that much for a magazine let me know what you think um you think knitting magazines in general are expensive 
I do think most knitting magazines these days are struggling a bit because um, the financial downturn in the UK is significant. I guess uh, most of their revenue comes from advertising. I think a lot of companies probably aren't advertising as much as they used to. And I don't know whether knitters are buying as many magazines as they used to because you can get a lot more content online now. So you can buy individual patterns. You can follow your favourite designers on social media or influencers on social media and get a lot of the news and information you used to get from magazines you can get that on social media now and you can buy your patterns and some people would rather buy a couple of patterns or one pattern than a magazine full of patterns they're not going to knit so let me know your thoughts on knitting magazines obviously i like knitting magazines because i designed for them but i don't buy as many as i used to so i guess i am part of the problem and maybe i should be buying more knitting magazines <laughs> Let me know what you think. Let me know what your thoughts are. And was this an interesting thing to add to the podcast? Um, I just wanted to add a little bit because I knew I didn't have a lot of knitting content to share this week. Hopefully next week there will be more knitting content to share. And maybe a new pattern? No, probably not. It'll probably take at least a couple of weeks, I think. So I'm filming this on a Tuesday and today's YouTube video is uh, a kind of 2023 review and plans for 2024 so i will link that below and at the end of this video so it's a video before this one because this one's due out on thursday and on tuesday i did a 2023 review 2024 plans i don't do like some videos do where they go through and show you every item they've knitted in 2023 i just talk in broader strokes about what i've knitted and then i show you some of the items i knitted and talk about some of my knitting plans for 2024 and why as a designer it's difficult to make knitting plans uh, for the year so i will link that video below and at the end of this video next week there will be a review on lantern moon knitting needles i think i've just filmed it so i think that'll be out on tuesday next week and what i think of these and are they worth the price I'm not going to give away now, but I came to, I made some surprising discoveries when I looked into the price of the Lantern Moon needle tips and my other favourite needles. So um, make sure you don't miss that next Tuesday. If you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, please consider subscribing because you will be the first to know about any special offers and things like that. Until the 20th of January, you can get 15% off any orders from the Yarn Addict online shop, which is yarnaddict.co.uk. And until with the code 15% off. So it's the 15 the percentage sign and off all in one word. I'll put the link below and all the details below, including the code. And the successful brioche knitting online course is also 15% off until the 12th of uh, January. So I'll put all those links below. If you're watching this after those dates, please sign up for my newsletter so you don't miss out on any future special offers. thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed today's video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and i will see you next time thanks for watching